Hello. Now, because you are watching this on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, you have the ability to make comments. I'm going to invite you to make a comment. I'm going to play you two pieces of music and I'd like you please to write in the comments below what these two pieces of music are. The first is a hymn from the 18th century. That's the first one. And the second one is a song from the 1960s. played you the introduction, famous introduction to the song from the 1960s and I've also played you another tune which comes from the 1700s. Have you guessed? Well, they are one and the same tune, written in the 1700s by an English minister who was also the son of a minister. His name was Philip Doddridge. The song is Oh Happy Day, a church hymn which begins Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee, my Saviour and my God. And the chorus, I'm going to choose an organ sound just so we can give it a much more authentic sound according to the time when it was written. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. In the 1960s, a group out of California, the Edwin Hawkins singers, rearranged that hymn to give us a song which topped many charts, which was number two in the UK charts. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed. So, Oh, happy day by the Edwin Hawkins singers. Now, many people are not aware of the fact that this song was originally a hymn written 200 years before it was made famous by the Edwin Hawkins singers. And those who are aware of its roots as a hymn may not actually be aware of just how much of the original melody Edwin Hawkins has actually maintained. So he's taken the original melody and has just changed it from a rhythmic point of view. The original song Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee, my Saviour and my God. Edwin Hawkins. Oh, happy day. It's oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away. Gospel. When Jesus washed. Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, He washed my sins away, my sins away. Is original, He washed my sins away. So can you hear how the original shape of the melody has actually been maintained? It's just been decorated. And then the second part of the song, he taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. 
that's the original hymn. And then we have, He taught me how to watch, fight and pray. And then one of the harmonies, He taught me how to watch, fight and pray. So it's following the original melody. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. So again, in those harmonies, the original melody is there, but we've got the harmonies around, which is decorating it. Now, one thing I appreciate about the Edwin Hawkins arrangement, I don't know whether this was intentional, but given the fact that Hawkins indeed was a high caliber, you know, genius of a musician who influenced so, so many um, subsequent gospel singers and artists and composers and songwriters, then I would imagine that what he did in terms of the shape of the song was quite intentional. This song is sung a lot at baptisms. I remember in baptisms, you know, playing this song as an organist, and it's quite a long song. It's got a lot, a lot, a lot of verse and quite a lot of chorus, and then it's got about three or four verses, so it's quite a long song to get through, but it was a popular choice at baptisms because of course it's subject matter of Jesus washing sins away. That's what baptism is all about. And in the Edwin Hawkins version, and it begins quite gentle. A lot of versions that you hear of the song quite upbeat. Oh, happy day! All right, I'm guilty of this. My choir's recorded this song for a commercial release, and it was quite, quite upbeat because we think of the word happy, and of course, it, it is talking about the joy of of conversion. So it's natural that we want to do that. And a lot of times, we get requests at weddings. Can you sing that song? Oh, happy days! A lot of people call it Oh, happy days. Uh, it's a very, very popular song requested but what Hawkins does if you listen to it is actually not quite as upbeat as we think it is it starts a lot more gentle but when it gets to the second section he taught me how that's when it comes to life and it comes down again and then it comes out and it comes down again and it's ending it's not this big you know Broadway type ending, but it's actually quite gentle. It comes back down again. And that gives this song its its spiritual nature, its its devotional nature. It's there's a sense of humility at that point. Because if you look at what it's talking about, which is surrender, surrendering life, but the joy that comes with it. But baptism is described in the New Testament as being like a death dying of the old man and rising to life of the new man. So you see that shape in the Hawkins um, arrangement of this, where the song does come to rest and it comes up again and goes down and comes back up again. So we have these themes of surrender and joy, this sort of bittersweetness as well, because that's what baptism is. You're saying goodbye to you know the life you once had and saying, oh, I've let you down, God. But you then celebrate in the fact that God says, you know, I wash your sins away and cast them right to the bottom of the sea. They are forgotten. What sin? And then the inner joy, not just a smile on your face and a little bit of a, a dance, a nice rhythm and a nice groove to a song. And then you enjoy it today and by tomorrow morning, then all of a sudden everything's down. But really that inner joy that keeps you going. So the Hawkins, in spite of it being you know, a chart hit and you might think it's being sort of configured for the commercial market, it's actually maintained its spiritual integrity. It's not just a, a piece of entertainment, but there's a spiritual integrity and a shape and a meaning to the song. So listen to the song again and just hear that new sound, because you might I've just heard it as just this thing to to get your groove on to, but it's it's not that. There's something a lot more serious underlying the joy that this song expresses. And finally, understanding you no know, black music, big soul music, spirituals, gospel music, the story of the the black 
life, the black struggle, often comes out in the music as well. And I'm not suggesting, because I, I, I don't have any knowledge of this, that, that, that this was some sort of protest song or whatever, but there is a particular voice that comes through the different types of music which have had their roots in you know, the African, I'm talking specifically the African American root, but same of African Caribbean music as well. There is, there is a voice in it which speaks on different levels. So there is the vertical level, the spiritual level, the, the God man relationship, but then there is also the the horizontal, the you know, the here and now. How does this affect my life and my experience? And this was done a lot in even the African American spirituals, where they would have a heavenly meaning, like when Jesus told parables. It was a an earthly story with a heavenly significance. A lot of the spirituals and the spiritual music, they had heavenly spiritual language, and they were, of course, yes, talking about about spiritual things. But in that as well was the voice, the cry the voice of hope, the cry saying, you know, this is our our struggle. And when you hear the soulfulness in a song like Oh Happy Day, Jesus washing sins away, you know, being equivalent to overcoming. Sin is like chains, it's like oppression, but the washing away is the symbol of, of freedom as well. So again, as you listen to that, have that in mind as well. The, era in which that song was recorded and produced what was going on in the world at that time and you can hear within it as well well i certainly hear and appreciate when i listen to that not just the heavenly spiritual message but also the thing that's happening within the human spirit the the social message in that song as well so i hope you can hear it in a different way and appreciate the song in a completely different way when you hear it again Next song I'm going to talk about, tune in again. It's gonna take a bit of time. I need to break this song down. If Oh Happy Day is probably the most known gospel song globally, I think this song is probably on par, if not a, just a, a close second. And the two songwriters were dear friends. I'm talking about a song which deserves uh, total Respect, a song which deserves a total explanation. It is a song which I have claimed for years, ever since I've known it, is my favourite gospel song of all time. It is indeed that masterpiece where the genius by the name of Dr. Richard Smallwood has within the space of five lines of music done something completely new in the gospel sound. You don't want to miss that one. Tune in again for some more musical notes. <laughs> 